This is the 71st lecture in the FOA lecture series on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about reference cables for fiber optic testing. When we test a fiber optic cable plant, we need to set test conditions that are similar to the way a communication system will use them. So whether we are doing insertion loss testing with a light source and a power meter or OTDR testing, we want our test set up to look the same way that the communication system will be using the cable plant. The communication system will connect into the cable plant using patch cords. Our testing methods will mimic the way those patch cords are used but we're going to use special reference cables for our testing that are chosen specific for the type of test that we're going to perform, whether it be insertion loss or OTDR testing. Insertion loss testing tests the cable plant almost exactly the way an actual communication system works. The communication system has a transmitter that's connected through a patch cord into the cable plant. And on the far end, it has a receiver that's connected also with a patch cord. In insertion loss testing, we use a test source with a launch reference cable and a power meter with a receive reference cable. So the diagram of what we're doing is almost exactly the same as the way the network will actually be used. For insertion loss testing, we need two reference cables. A launch reference cable attaches to the test source and is used to set the 0 dB reference and to connect into the cable plant under test. At the far end, we use a receive reference cable connected to the power meter that connects into the far end of the cable plant. The reference cables allow us to set test conditions and also measure the connection loss on each end of the cable plant. Reference cables for insertion loss testing are about the same length as the patch cords used to connect the equipment to the cable plant, typically 1 to 3 meters. We need to set a 0 dB reference for making our tests, and there are three options for doing that. We can use a one cable reference if the connectors are the same on the instruments and the cable under test. For example, both have standard SC connectors. But for example, if the cable plant has LC connectors and our test equipment has SCs, we need a two cable reference. In this case, we'll use reference cables that have SC connectors on one side so that they made up with the test equipment and LC connectors on the other side that mate with the cable plan under test. Then we have to use a different reference method to set our zero dB reference. Where we connect the SC connectors end on our reference cables to the instruments and the LC connection to each other to make the 0 dB reference. Note on the meter that we set the 0 dB reference, but there is a connection between the two reference cables included in the reference. This will affect the measurement that we make, as we'll see shortly. To further complicate this issue, we sometimes need a three cable reference. And that is that if the connectors are different on the instruments and the cables, or the connectors are what's called a plug and jack connector. When we do a three cable reference, the cable in the middle will have connectors on it that are the same as the cable plant. The reference cable for the launch cable 
will have a connector to mate the source connector and then a mating connector to one end of the cable plant under test. Likewise, the receive reference cable will have a connector to mate up with the power meter and another connector on the other end of the cable that mates up with the cable plant under test. The three cable reference method is basically a cable substitution test. The third reference cable is basically a short version of the cable plant we want to test. It has the same type of fiber, the same type of connectors, but it's typically a very short cable so that there's no loss but the connectors on the end. The fiber is too short to have any loss. Note that when we set a 3dB cable reference, there are two connections in the cables that we are using to set the reference. So when we set a 0dB reference, there are now two unknown connectors included, and that affects the measurement that we make. So there's three different ways that we can set the 0dB reference. If we use a one cable reference and connect the launch reference cable directly to the power meter, we can set the 0 dB reference at the end of that launch cable. If we use a two cable reference, that includes one connection between the two reference cables. So we have to compensate that when we make a test. If we use a three cable reference, it includes two connection losses. And that will affect the loss also that we measure when we actually do the test of the cable plant loss. The measured loss will be reduced by those unknown reference connection losses, and it adds to the uncertainty of the measurement. The method we use to set the 0 dB reference will affect the loss that we measure in the cable plant. So let's say we're testing a cable plant that has x dB of loss. If we make a one cable reference, the loss measured will be x dB. If we use the two cable reference method, we'll measure x dB minus the loss of the connection between our two reference cables. And if we use the three cable reference, we'll measure x dB minus the two unknown connections when we set our 0 dB reference. So the method that you use to set the 0 dB reference needs to be documented along with the loss of the cable plant that you test because the different methods give you different values. And for documentation purposes, that needs to be carefully recorded. The launch cable is also used to condition the modes in the fiber for testing, particularly important in multi-mode cable testing. It can be used to set in circle flux standards or use a mandrel wrap on the launch cable. In single mode, we typically use a small loop to ensure the single mode launch. But either way, it's always the launch cable, the cable that's attached to the test source, that is used for modal conditioning. The OTER, of course, uses a different method of testing the loss of the cable plant. It uses the backscatter from the fiber itself. But we still use launch and receive reference cables in the OTDR. They merely have slightly different purposes. The launch cable used with OTDR testing is required to get past the dead zone of the OTDR. The dead zone of the OTDR can blank out measurements for tens or hundreds of meters. So the launch reference cable has to be long enough to reach past the dead zone to allow the OTDR to make valid measurements. Then, of course, it connects into the cable plant under test to make a connection loss.
The receive reference cable is basically used to make a measurement of the connector on the far end of the OTDR. Some OTDR tests are not actually measuring loss. For example, when we're installing a cable plant, it's common to use an OTDR to verify the splices as they're being made. Then we're not interested in the end-to-end -end loss of the cable plant. We're only interested in the loss of the splices. So then we don't need a second reference cable. And so the receive reference cable is not necessary for all OTDR tests, only those where we're trying to measure the end-to-end -end loss of the cable plant. So the launch reference cable for OTDR testing has to be much longer than the OTDR dead zone, typically two or three times as normal, and may need to be 100 meters long for short length cables and several kilometers long if you're measuring really long distance cables. The reference cable at the receive end, however, only be, needs to be long enough for the OTDR to see it because its main purpose is to determine the end of the cable plan under test and measure the loss of the connector on the end. If you're doing bidirectional testing with the OTDR, which a lot of people do to get the correct loss at splices and connectors, the launch cable and the receive cable should be the same length because when you do bidirectional testing, you don't switch the launch and receive cables, you just move the OTDR from one end to the other to ensure you don't change test conditions. So the general requirements for reference cables are these. The fiber type in the reference cable must match the fiber in the cable plant being tested. So if you're testing multi-mode fiber with a 50 micron core, you need to use a 50 micron launch and receive cable. If you're using single mode, G.652 standard single mode fiber can be used for almost all testing. Connectors must mate with the instruments and the connectors on the cable plant, which may require hybrid cables for two or three cable reference methods. The cables for insertion loss measurements should be about one to three meters long. Cables for OTDR testing should be sufficiently long for the launch cables to extend well beyond the OTDR dead zone. If you're only doing OTDR tests in one direction in the cable plant, the receive cable only has to be long enough to be resolved by the OTDR. If you're doing bidirectional testing, it needs to be as long as the launch cable. Because when you do bidirectional testing, you don't remove the launch and receive cables. You just move the OTDR to the other end. So then your launch and receive cables need to be the same basic length. Reference cables need to be high quality cables. And the best way to determine that is that they are low loss cables when tested against each other. The main thing you're interested in is that the connectors are clean and high quality and in good condition. So the connectors should have low loss when you mate the cables against each other. And that's the easiest way to specify and test your launch and receive cables. The accuracy of the measurements you make with your launch and receive cables will be determined by the condition of those cables. As we said, they need to be low loss cables when tested against each other. That's generally considered to be about three tenths of a dB loss or better. The accuracy and reliability of the measurements that you make will depend on the condition of your reference cables. So it's important to take good care of them. Inspect connectors and clean them regularly. 
Test them against each other for loss. Keep the protective caps on the connectors. But as you probably know, we call them dust caps because they often have dust in them. So when you take the caps off, clean the connectors before you use them. Store your reference cables in a safe place to prevent damage and, of course, someone picking them up and using them for patch cords. Don't kink, twist, or otherwise stress the cables and repair or replace them when needed. You'll find more information on reference cables and fiber optic testing in all its different manners on the FOA website, the online guide, and Fiber U courses. Courses, for example, on basic testing and OTDRs. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Association of Fiber Optics, and the recognized certifying body for fiber optic technicians. You can find more at the FOA online at foa.org and FiberU at FiberU.org.